All right, today we're going to talk about the iFlight Success F7 Twin G flight control board. Okay, so iFlight this week launched their Success F7 Twin G flight control board. And what's different about this board? Well, this has a dual gyro setup on it. And a lot of the boards out there, I really only know of two now. There's an F P Racing F7 Dual and the Success F7 Twin G, the iFlight one we're looking at here. Those are the only two I know of that has dual gyros on it that can be used in a sensor fusion method as well as individually. All the other boards that have two gyros, they can only you can only use one gyro or the other gyro. There's a couple great features on this board that, that I appreciated. One of the big ones to me, honestly, is the 32 meg onboard flash. That's a big deal. Uh, 16 meg onboard flash just doesn't cut it. Uh, you can get about one flight. Now with this, you probably could get, if you're logging at a 2K logging rate, which is plenty fine for uh, 8K mode, you'll probably get four, three, four, maybe even five flights. Depends how long the flights are, obviously, on a 32 meg board. So that, that's a, a great thing. Good job. The other thing that's impressive about it is the new gyros they have. So it looks like it's using the latest Invincense, and that is the 2689 gyros, and obviously there's two of them. Third, uh, you know, F7, I recently switched over from Spectrum to FR Sky, and dealing with the whole inversion thing on F4 boards, just forget it. If you're looking for a new board for 43 bucks, just you know, don't deal with it. F7, little future proof there, and you don't have to deal with inversion. And just the additional number of UARTs you get with an F7, to me, it's it's really the way to go. Uh, the RPM the RPM filtering in Betaflight 4.0, which was coming out, will work with F7 and F4 boards, so you're you're good to go there as well. Again, reiterating some of the specifications here, you can see them on the screen. You can see it supports the. IRC Tramp VTX protocol, so that's a yes for that, great job, and uh, number of UARTs, so on and so forth. Looking at the board layout, and honestly, I'd, I'd love to show you the board. I have the board, but it's, it's in my quad, so I'm, and I'm not going to unsolder everything. You can see it here anyways. It's, you know, has eight motor pins, so that's great if you, you know, you have an octocopter or hexacopter, octocopter, whatever you'd have there, so you have that support. Board layout in general. Uh, from my take, you know, it has everything you need there uh, to wire everything up, bootloader button, so on and so forth. I don't believe it has the dual cam or anything like that, but, you know, if you're just looking to hook up OSD and your VTX and motor wires and things of that nature, this board is going to take care of you. So, how does this work when you're getting into Betaflight? So, honestly, you just plug it on in, you get on Betaflight, uh, whatever the current flavor. I said Betaflight 4.0 is going to come up. Uh, it should be in stable release by the target date is April 1st. But between now and then, you can be on 3.5, point, I guess 6 or 7, I, I think they're at. And then uh, 4.0 is coming up as well. For the dual sensor fusion, what we can do is just go to the CLI and type in get gyro. Okay. And then from there, you can browse up just a little bit. And you're going to look for this variable right here gyro to use. It's either both, first, or second. The default is both, it's on both, so you're in good shape there. And that will use the sensor fusion right off the bat. Uh, you can always switch to just be first or second as well. So you have those options. Like I said, in the other boards that have dual, dual gyros that, you know, that aren't the SP Racing F7, because that has sensor fusion as well, you know, even if you set it to both, it will then switch back to be first, I think is the, or will go to, or, or first or second, I, I don't know. It won't stay on both. So do keep that in mind. Before we get into the de some other details, let's just look at the difference in the gyros. So you can see I have the InvenSense uh, data sheets up for the 2689 chip, which was in the uh, Twin G. And then a lot of boards are using the 2602. And the 2602 has been out for a while. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with the 2602 specifically, but it wasn't, you know, this is the first board, the, the 2689 the new one here, that specifically the application you can see is called out as drone. And there's some other things in this. 
So if you compare feature for feature, there's a lot of similarities, but there is some additional uh, motion processing that's available. Now, I'm not sure yet if that's used, that part of the chip is used, but I'll show you here in a second. There's an additional chip on this gyro, like in that little gyro, there's an additional little sub microchip that deals with internal digital motion processing, the DMP. And it looks like it can be exported onto a different pin or whatnot. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure on that. And somebody can jump in in the comments or iFlight can as well. And it's something that might need further development in Betaflight uh, in addition, but it's a feature that's there. Pound for pound, everything else that you get on the 2602 is the same thing you get on the 2687. This just has some additional things that, that you know, might be, may be able to be advanced into the future. So if you look at the block diagram between the two, you can see this is this digital motion processor. And you can browse down farther, and I'll put a link to this data sheet uh, below so you can read up on it if you'd like. But down here on PDF page 21 of 53, they talk about the digital motion processor and how it can offload uh, some of the processing load on the gyro itself uh, to do computational things of, of that nature. So it's getting a little bit above my pay grade for you know where that's at. It's kind of new to me as well, so uh, something to look into. But that's a new feature on that specific gyro chip that this board is using. And I. I don't know of another board that's using this, this new gyro chip yet. I'm sure there will be more going into the future, but as far as I'm aware at least, uh, this is the only one that has that so far. Okay, now back into beta flight. And the sensor fusion helps limit the amplitude of some of the noise coming in without any additional phase delay. It shows results, I'm going to show you that in a second, for 8K. Uh, it shows even better results for 32K. Uh, it's a pretty significant deal for 32K, uh, definitely. Uh, 8K though, just as well, it, it does uh, add some accuracy and reduce the uh, peak amplitude of the noise coming in a little bit well, a little bit. And there's no real downside to it doing the sensor fusion. There's no additional like phase delay on the gyro. It's not offsetting things like we've talked about in the filter fundamentals. Some of the other items on this board, it looks like we are supporting a race transponder. So that's a nice feature. Obviously LSD and OSD as well. And if you take a look at the UARTs, you're getting about five UARTs on there for use in your accessories and GPS and some other things. As you are looking at this, do want to acknowledge uh, the board I have is a pre-release. So I have 16 meg on mine. You guys didn't give me the the 30 two meg board, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, the, the release board has 32 meg. So I'll also drop a link to a post I made back on February 15th announcing where Betaflight is dropping 32 uh, kilohertz support. And I used this board, the iFlight uh, Twin G, to demonstrate the difference in the variance you get from a 32K signal versus an 8K signal. And on there it looked uh, like to me that the variance on a 32k symbol signal uh, was a lot wider than you would get on an 8k. I'm going to show you that in a second. So I'll drop this link below. You can go check out that post and then we'll talk about these figures here. Other great graphics in here. It shows you like what 8k noise looks like versus 32k noise, things like that. So what is sensor fusion? So on the left hand side here I have 8k mode with this exact board and then 32k mode with the exact board as well. And you can see in 32K mode, the deviation between the black line and gray line is a lot, there's a lot more. So this is the read from each of the gyros, uh, gyro one and gyro two. And what the sensor fusion does is just average those together to get the output signal. So you can see that, yes, of course, if you had gyro uh, two in this scenario, that would have uh, less noise amplitude here. But in other scenarios, Gyro 2 had more noise. So it's really back and forth. And Sensor Fusion uh, works both those together to get basically the best read and averages those together. Sensor Fusion is a broad term. You can use it for all kinds of sensors. So if we have other sensors that could be used for motion, uh, we could bring that into the mix as well. In this scenario, we have two gyros instead of one. Now on the 8K mode, you can see that the variance between the two is a lot tighter. And that difference is not just this board. I've noticed the same thing on the CL Racing F7, collaborated with a lot of other people. Um, Bardwell did a video and, and kind of acknowledged the same, that sometimes in you know, these IMC gyros, when he's running 32K mode, some of the gyros work great and some don't. And my conclusion is you just, 
you don't know what you're going to get as much. It, it almost seems like the production tolerances maybe or, or output tolerances of an AK mode on any given IMC gyro is just a little tighter. When you do get this board and if you want to look at the sensor fusion data and kind of see the differences and things like that, I'm going to drop this link below. I did make a wiki, a debug modes wiki for beta flight and there's a section here for sensor fusion. Now looking at the difference in noise level from one to the other, again in 32K mode it does make a pretty, you know, a visual difference here. You can see this is the iFlight, so this is uh, two, these two boards are on the same rig, so this is the same exact flight. Uh, the mounting is with metal studs, so the metal posts come up and then the, the flight controllers are slid down over top of that so we don't have any uh, movement from like a nylon standoffs or anything like that. So, and you can see the difference here. So in 32K, you can see this lower end noise. There's less on the iFlight, which is pretty important. Um, up here on the uh, CL Racing F7, you can see you just get some more lower end bass noise and the low end stuff is, is really problematic. Same thing for high, you get a little bit less um, for the iFlight. Now, as I kind of mentioned just previously, the, the tighter, you have a tighter tolerance. It is um, getting probably a more precise answer to the PID loop, but the differential in noise you can kind of see on those plots, it's not like the amplitude was m that much different in an 8K mode. So I still bring up the 32K mode because I, I have a hunch that's still going to stick around the open source, maybe through Butterfly or, or something like that. But uh, or if 32K comes back into the fold, you can see that the benefit is there. For 8K, you're kind of getting a more precise answer. I think just from my standpoint, where I would look at it too, is that you kind of have a backup gyro. I have seen people, you know, race or, you know, hit a tree or crash and then their gyro start, it's kind of funky. Well, when your board's toast, unless you're going to, you know, be skilled enough to replace a gyro, here you kind of have a backup. You can take a look at it just like you would on any of the other boards that have the tool, the two gyros on them. So again, here you can't really see as much of a difference. There's a difference. You can see a little bit here, a little bit less yellow, a little bit less than there. You know, it, it's in there. It's just not as stand, draw out to your face. It's mostly on the roll axis here. You, you can kind of see it. So yeah, that is it. That is the iFlight Success F7 Twin G Flight Control Board check it out or if you have any questions drop it below like i said i'm going to continue to uh, be flying this board yeah I, i'm happy with it so uh, i think it's a, a solid choice uh, for anybody out there it's looking for it especially if you're in the race scene or, or whatnot and uh, just looking for a little something different like i said with the sensor fusion kind of setup or a little bit of a backup and redundancy there thanks everybody and i hope this helped